Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL 18 Hostile League Round of Four, aka the semi-final. Top four. It's a, in in basketball, United States American. Whoa, what was that from two uh, from Klauso? Hold that thought. Upper left hand corner, we got Klauso starting as whatever this color is, Terran. Upper right hand corner, we got Tucson starting as the gray. Terran, that was an accidental liftoff, and that's uh, this is on Vermeer, by the way. Accidental liftoff, which is very, very costly early stages in the game. <clears throat> For I'm not sure what caused that. I'm going to chalk that up to maybe like late game tournament nerves. I'm not going to say that's game ending, but it does hurt a lot, actually. The more mistakes you make earlier in the game, the more they kind of. How do I put this? The first 10 minutes of the game, <laughs> every minute of the game, the first section is more important than the last because there's a snowball effect, right? So it's like losing that few bit of minerals delays you a couple seconds and so on and so forth. Which means Tucson's getting this supply depot down a little bit more rapidly, so on and so forth. But it's not game ending, I will say. Not game ending. But let's talk about the previous match. Tucson able to win it in kind of a what I expected to be a macro slugfest really turned into an interesting tactical back and forth. And Tucson really getting the better of Klauso as far as comparative positioning. Barracks getting dropped here from Tucson. And uh, if I was actually, if I was Klaus right in the second, okay, he's going to drop the barracks on the low ground. Let's see if he decides to produce Marines out of it. On occasion, what you can do in TVT is, is produce a couple of Marines. And if your opponent just lifts the barracks immediately and goes scouting and you get a lucky early scout, sometimes you can get some early kills along those lines. Klaus, so maybe I'm wondering if he's thinking about taking that risk because of that accidental early game liftoff might be editing. The other thing he could be doing is just wanting to position for a barracks into expansion to get an early game lead. Unfortunately for him, he's going to get scouted by Tucson first. So both of those options are going to be a little bit harder to execute. We do have the refinery up and no refinery. So I think this is going to be an initial base build attempt. And with this, this is going to be a lot of information for Tucson, which could put him in a very, very strong position here. So he's going to see the barracks out on the low ground, first of all, and he's going to be able to wander into the main if he wants and see, and he's going to see that Marine queued up. And he's going to be able to, honestly, what I might do is put down a proxy supply depot or something along those lines. We do have a refinery gab, but that refinery gab is very, very late. And that's going to be a huge signal to Tucson. If he could dash back down here, yeah, just get a proxy something down like an eBay. And that might be worth it in this scenario. Marine trying to get some damage down on that SCV. The SCV is still trying to scout things out. So it looks like upon being spotted, Klauso going to go ahead and go for an adjustment. He's still going to try to drop that command center, but he wants a couple Marines out first. The SCV able to wander down and confirm that command center is built. Pays for it with his life, however. <coughs> in the meantime, this SCV has got no information. There's going to be a command center drop. In the meantime, not that far behind. And honestly, with the factory down all the earlier for Tucson, this could be really, really beneficial. We'll have to see. This is certainly going to be a investment of a bunker. A bunker absolutely necessary here uh, for Klauso. He was not going to be able to defend this front once that vulture's out in the map. We're going to have that first vulture constructed. The command center being built at the natural expansion at least spotted there from Klauso. A first marine to support. So a marine and a vulture now going to be out on the map. And that's going to allow that machine shop to get dropped. And again, a similar tech lead to game one. We'll see what Tucson's able to do with it this time. And I'll be curious if it's another Goliath follow-up. Kind of the... There's kind of an interesting... It's not a precisely rock, paper, scissors, because it's not like Vultures and Goliaths are totally worthless as far as a follow-around. There's only two Marines in that bunker as well. And with Vulture speed, there is a world where that bunker is insufficient. Vultures could go for a run by right into that natural expansion. It looks like mines are being researched instead first. Rather than taking that risk, we have a second factory being built on the higher ground, but the factory's out that much earlier, and the tech, again, alongside for Tucson. Worker lead, very, very... So the worker lead actually just slightly in Klauso's favor. And so basically what this is spelling out to is, is just an, a much earlier big advantage in tech as far as spider mines. Spider mines? Said that weird. Spider mines for Tucson right off the bat. We have a third factory very rapidly getting dropped. So I'm anticipating a, rather than the Goliath play more three factory vulture out of this from Klauso, we'll have to see. He's still got a lot of options on his plate. 
Mine's just about finished. We do have a siege, a siege tank queuing up and a second machine shop drop as far as a follow-up. So very similar to game one, Tucson able to get some initial mines down at the natural. We are not going to see... We're seeing uh, Vulture Speed actually being upgraded. So it is going to be three factory Vulture play, which is going to, with that siege tank out on the map, is going to give an advantage to Tucson, particularly if he builds double siege tank out of this because that absolutely smashes early vulture play and it'll have a little bit of forewarning to spot it one thing with vultures is they're hyper mobile and so on occasion if you overextend with the siege tanks with tucson which tucson has been uh doing on occasion where he moves all of these troops out to the front there is a world where their vultures just run by and cram into the natural expansion and are able to shut down some bases and end up with some early play that siege tank really wanting to that marine right there was he was really testing that siege tank's patience because you could get run over by that guy, bro. You need to watch yourself. Still sitting on double factory, but just the double siege tank is much stronger than the vulture play. There is, looks like we do have an armory dropping behind this. There is a world, never mind, a siege tank dropping short and Tucson continuing with the aggression. That bunker taking some free damage as well. The vultures waiting on the wings want to go for a run by. Second siege tank here. As soon as there's three siege tanks out here on the front, well, they siege, actually, less of an advantage. Now the Vulture's going. This will be some dead workers on the front, but this should be two dead siege tanks. But this also lets Tucson know that, hey, it was a Vulture Flood as far as a follow-up. So siege tanks die. That does drop the SCV count a bit. And now that barracks flooding forward and the Vulture's away, these siege tanks need to unsiege and move back a bit because this is now going to be an exposed natural expansion. This is dangerous here. Two SCVs making the way out. Looks like the Vultures are going to be able to get this around. Three of them making it into the main. Honestly, Tucson's a bit lucky that it wasn't larger. And now, Klaus are going to be able to equalize and actually gain an advantage. This was my big concern from Tucson right here was this exact scenario where he's got... He had the unit lead, but being overly aggressive... Klauso able to sneak underneath and get some counter damage. So where he was ahead a handful of workers, he's now behind. He still hasn't pulled the siege tanks back. With the two siege tanks at the natural expansion, it's a little bit more of a defense, if he, especially if he can clog this edge. But he's actually staging them forward. A little bit surprised. Third, third factory going down. Worker deficit at this stage. We do have the machine shop up. Fourth factory... That's been spotted, and it looks like it's still going to be nothing but Vulture here for Klauso, at least for the short term. Plus one weapons being an upgraded in the meantime. A huge slew of mines on that northern pike to provide some solid scouting information. Tucson spreading the siege tanks out quite a bit. This is still shootable by a control group of Vultures, though. I guess he's just relying on the siege tanks that would be produced as far as a follow-up to go ahead and provide some defense. And a factory and an additional command center being dropped. <clears throat> but another SCV in position to go ahead and build the additional command center on site for Klauso. So I think Klauso won with the supply leak. In mind, that's a lot in vultures. Some nice spacing here from Tucson to, to shoot at a distance here. But without the group clump, that is allowing these siege tanks... Honestly, I would just unsiege them and, and pull them back and leave them in a group. Instead, Tucson leaving some of them sieged. And now pressing a little bit forward. He can go ahead and commsat and clear out the rest of this, but Klauso getting good value out of these vultures with a degree of map control. So the command center is going to be able to lift off and float across. Klauso could have dropped that command center earlier with the amount of map control he had. Maybe a little bit concerned about a siege tank shove again at his natural expansion three machine shops dropped to try to close that siege tank count very very rapidly we already have a third machine shop being constructed and it's going to be a six victory uh, six six factory count for tucson and so i think tucson gonna be able to recapture that advantage here as far as a follow-up because even though he's down a handful of SCVs, this is going to be three bases of saturation superior what he is down is is this Northern Spike as far as position. He does have that barracks scouting forward where he can go ahead and reinforce the siege tanks towards that forward front. But off the 
six factories, he's just going to be able to produce a little bit more, and he's already got this third base up and running to support it, and he's already getting that refinery down to make sure that siege tank count stays humming as well. Plus one weapons is going to finish somewhat later, however, for Tucson. Really, that plus two weapons is kind of the big shift with the siege tanks. More, so positional vision advantage here for Klauso, slight supply lead, but I'm expecting that to shift in a moment for Tucson. And when Tucson seems to have these supply leads, one, he's got an amazing game sense to know he's got it. But also secondarily, he's very vicious and will oftentimes go for very aggressive press attacks in response. Right now, it is a dash to the southern spoke. Tucson able to get there and able to siege up. Klaus are turning around. Looking for... There's a pocket if he can comps at it. To maybe go across that northern position into the corner again. But Tucson looks like he's able to clear out that three o'clock base and he's gonna he's already staging up to go ahead and grab another expansion, doing a good job of macroing. The macro really held through in the previous match. A vulture on patrol bottom right in the meantime. Couple additional mines being dropped. On paper, Klauso holds more map. But what he does need to do is just grab a fourth before Tucson does. It looks like we have a single SUV making its way out to do just that. And Klauso really testing the edges, wanting to get to that. 3 o'clock. Wanna threatening th that 3 o'clock. This time, Tucson going to build on site. And this is going to be pretty close. Base. We'll try to look at that razor thin edge of timing here. Plus one weapons. A, l a minute off. So, a little bit of a lead there from Klaus. So, so command center now dropped at 3 o'clock. We'll try to keep an eye here. At the 9 o'clock. That SCV still remaining silent. Right this second. Looks like a vulture wanted to sneak up here to the three o'clock to deny some mining there. This command center, are we seeing it? Saw a little bit. Rafe out for Tucson. Intercepted by that Goliath, so should be able to back out. Now that command center dropped, what is that, three minutes later? <clears throat> so not out of the realm of catch-up opportunity, but this is going to be, an, a, again, a slight edge for Tucson once again. Now dropping that seventh factory. We already have that 7th factory just about finished for Klauso. Handful of vultures here, bottom right. So as far as map positioning, if Tucson... We'll see how this plays out. Because right now, one problem for Tucson is Klauso has played very close to his edge. Going to get some th free vultures. These vultures still not speed upgraded. Tucson hasn't really needed to play it. He's uh, needed it because he's been in kind of a defensive slot this entire time just now. Finishing. They're going to go ahead and roll. Might be able to, now that they're on this side of the map, be able to sneak up that 9 o'clock, get some damage done there. It looks like Klauso may be anticipating this because he's got some siege tanks round, uh, rounding mid-map. Just wants to get some mines planted bottom left initially. Right here, SCV transfer there at the 9 o'clock. This is going to be ooh, a little bit of an early transfer there from Klauso. Slight supply lead from Klauso at this stage. He's got slightly more SCVs. Much better map positioning. The Vultures hesitating briefly. Gonna drop whatever mines they have, and that brief hesitation is gonna be their demise. If they had gone just a half second earlier, might have been able to catch some of these SCVs. It looks like they still might get an SCV or two. But otherwise, very quickly getting cleared out. Game of seconds here. On occasion. But Klaus all of a sudden spiking to a 20 supply lead, and it looks like he's going to use that 20 supply lead to go ahead and close Tucson to his side of the map. And right now, if you're talking about straight map divisions, Klaus will be able to check out bottom right. If he can just deny one of these expansions, race sneaking and getting some free damage here. If he can just deny these expansions and get one expansion up on Tucson and deny everything bottom right, he will end up winning the match. Right now, he's in a pretty strong... Defensive slot to do so, but here comes Tucson rolling forward. Upgrades even, sieging with a decent army spread. The Vulture's on the, the forward siege tank. And Klaus's reinforcements remaining on the back side of the map. So it looks like Tucson is going to be able to shove and punch through. He took heavy losses, though, as far as raw supply in that counter. So all of a sudden, he's down 20 supply. And let's see if we see a Tucson-style maneuver from Klauso this time, where you can go ahead and group up and say, okay, you're a little bit overextended here to the south. Maybe I punch out towards your natural expansion. We do have a large grouping here 
mid-map to potentially do just that. Also, some vultures going ahead and denying. We have an SCV making its way. It's going to get wiped out. And Klauso going up to the high ground. I'm not sure I like that play. As far... So wanting to threaten that 3 o'clock, he still... He needs to get up on that high ground and siege immediately. To take advantage of that, Tucson moving in some his troops. Looks like there's going to be an earlier siege from Klauso and cutting off a lot of reinforcements. So actually ending up being beneficial. I think Tucson was anticipating Klauso going all the way up instead of just sieging in position. So still re retaining this southern kind of cusp of wall. So you got kind of a weird, let me kind of show you the situation. We have a weird outcropping right here of a bit of defense. But this spike in between where, where Tucson is not able to breach. Maybe if he unseiges and goes from both directions, he can encapsulate this army and reestablish some defense there. But what is happening for Klauso is he's got some free open bases here bottom left. It looks like he's already got an SCV to maybe grab the natural on the low ground, and he's denying bottom right, which is the huge game-winning condition for him at this stage. Some vultures and goliaths flooding forward, looking to clear out the stragglers here across the 6 o'clock location. They are able to get on top, and let's see if they just hold and siege. It looks like instead they're engaging the, the misfire not working out to Klauso's advantage, but able to clear out a few siege tanks there. A command center attempting to get built on spot. The Vulture's going to go ahead and deny that. We have more Vultures streaming across to continue with that denial, but we've got five machine shops down, some Wraith being produced on this side, and a big problem here for Klauso is, is he's actually at a mass... So he's going for dropships, but he's at a massive deficit as far as factory production. So if he ends up with a big trade, that could very quickly swing back to Tucson's favor. And speaking of big trades, mid-map, a lot of these units getting wiped out and Tucson actually even in supply all of a sudden. So if Tucson can, can manage to macro, he will be able to resupply pretty rapidly. So despite the 20 supply differential right here, this still might be okay for Tucson if he gets on top of his macro. <laughs> it's actually a testament to Klauso still macroing out of these uh, the number of bases he has on a lower factory count. So let's see if we see a massive refill and, a, and an overtake here from Tucson momentarily. A couple of Wraith also migrating on the field. Looks like this Klauso getting additional base. If Klauso can get this base up and running and capped, that'll be a significant advantage. Wraith pecking away at the top position. I don't see any Goliaths making their way out to engage this. By the way, the main is mined out some science vessels being produced. Mains mined out, natural expansion just about mined out. Some siege tanks getting pincered in between. Ooh. And taking some shots from some mines. Tucson even in supply, lower on workers. So these are kind these are the make or break moments now for Tucson. Supply lead, fewer workers, fewer bases. Is he able to hold? And will there be an SCV transfer to the bottom left is the other trick of this here, because this is just about to come online, and the SCVs are just now making their way across. So superior spotting, but on, this looks like more siege tanks and a better spread potentially for Klauso, so he's going to be able to reinforce that northern spike. Some siege tanks, etc., making their way bottom right to go ahead and try to clear out those bases, but they're taking some losses with some spider mines. And additionally, Klauso with the dropships about to be very, very mobile. We can ignore some defensive lines and potentially shut down bases bottom right over to over Tucson's defensive slot. Tucson, though, with keep in mind this drop the dropships and honestly the science vessels cut into the raw siege tank count quite a bit. So near 200, 200, level two weapons on both ends, so supply counts just even. Tucson now making his way south, clearing out that mid-spoke. We have a drop making its way towards that natural expansion. And is it just going to go straight for the factory line is the next question. Yeah, just going straight for the factory line. So a big drop. And Tucson ignoring the drop. I, I presume he spotted it. He's brought some troops back. Going to try to focus on that armory. And really entrenched here. Man, he's going to be able to do a lot of damage with this. Look at this positioning here. But we do have a big army free from Tucson. Making its way towards the 9 o'clock and bottom left. 
But Tucson right here taking a massive supply hit. All sorts of SCVs getting obliterated. So if this attack army is mitigated, then that should be victory for Klauso. All of a sudden up 50 supply. Bottom right hand base up, but empty. Things finally lifting off. I'm not even sure what... Yeah, we still got siege tanks here. A lot has been wiped out. That armory's still humming. I want to know. Mine's getting massive splash damage, though. But as we look at the aftermath... So the 9 o'clock base... Briefly denied. Some SCVs, SCVs dropping. Forcing these siege tanks to unsiege and resiege. Also having some trouble cleaning out this 9 o'clock. So it's... I'm, I'm wondering if this actually played out a little bit to Tucson's favor because he's denied some mining. He hasn't wiped out this 9 o'clock base yet. I'm going to say no. Klaus is still in a really, really good position here. Up 30 supply. He's up a lot of workers. He's just got to get the workers mining. And it looks like he's got okay saturation here. Resaturating the 9 o'clock. Tucson is on the wings and starting to reinforce. Some SCVs actually pulling off to go ahead and suicide and free up some supply. And it looks like Klauso is going to be able to clear this up. Some additional siege tanks nearby on the low ground. And this is where the four dropships and not having the equivalent amount of siege... Or five dropships and not having that equivalent amount of siege tanks kind of hurts. And where those nine factories and having a big bank underneath really helps. You can see Tucson catching right back up. And Tucson just being an abs... Just viciously... Clearing this out. Bottom right hand base is starting to mine. So we got a little bit vestiges of mining here. Tucson does need to get mining someplace because he's really hurting for resources. He's got a couple wraith out in the field, but at the same so Klauso mining a little bit better. But is behind in supply. <laughs> I'm gonna chalk that up to not really utilizing the dropships as best he could. I don't know that SCVs were the thing to drop right there. A couple vultures getting wiped out by some Goliaths to the north. Wraith looking for open targets. These dropships, or sorry, these science vessels also not really being a a big factor here. And Tucson is starting to mine bottom right. So even supply, plus three weapons, plus two armor, by the way. For Tucson, where I don't think we have that upgrade opposite side. It's 2-2, two, two, opposite corner. Some vultures have managed to find the bottom left. And with this bulkhead... It's trouble, but we got another drop making its way out for Klauso. He's looking for mining bases. He's going to find the 3 o'clock. Tucson knew where he needed to go before Klauso did, though. And it looks like one dropship is going to get taken out before it's able to deliver its payload. But this Vultures raking over everything here bottom left. Klauso all of a sudden behind in SCVs. And those dropships are empty, and that was cleared out. So Tucson all of a sudden up on workers. If he can just saturate bottom right, he'll be in a good position. Klauso, recognizing reversal of fortune, going to tr try to capitalize on the troops being out of position and try to press out towards that natural expansion. Tucson responding rapidly and getting the reinforcements to that location. And so I think Tucson going to be able to clear this up pretty easily. With that, and a threat here at the 9 o'clock, if Tucson just walks some troops into the 9 o'clock, which he's doing right this second, he's going to be able to stop that base mining, and all of a sudden, Klauso is no longer mining and lost a command center bottom left and has nothing to help defend this 9 o'clock location. So Tucson, 40 supply lead. There were moments here where I thought it was going to be Klauso's game. A couple mines clearing, uh, creating some havoc bottom right, but that's going to be an easy take for Tucson. Klauso gathering up what he has. He's going to make another punch towards the natural expansion. But there are a lot of troops here to beat it, and this is a close reinforcement point. So with the 40 supply deficit, some of that supply in dropships and nothing else going on. Klauso may be in trouble. Looks like he's going to try to move these troops mid-map. Might go for a two-pronged attack. If he could just bring the dropships back, load what's up in here. 
clear out the 9 o'clock and then proceed from there, he might be in a little bit of a better situation. Eating some damage as he's trying to make his way to the 3 o'clock. The dropship's able to peek through, but again, currently empty. And this is nuts. So threatening the 3 o'clock and Tucson doing Tucson things. Now saying, okay, you're going to move your troops and overextend. I'm going to move to your natural expansion. So this is turning into an absolute starvation match. So SCV's trying to defend themselves here at the 3 o'clock. Tucson thinking better of the natural expansion assault. Supply counts are once again even. And it's one base mining versus one base mining all of a sudden. But Tucson able to clear out the 3 o'clock. Not before he's lost a lot of SCVs. So worker counts even. He's still got a base there, and he's got another command center floating bottom right. But we got a whole bunch of troops making their way out for Klauso. Still at a slight upgraded disadvantage here. And they're not going to end up with this, the faster siege over this position. The SCV's also making their way out to, re uh, to resaturate the 3 o'clock and presumably bottom right. So 15 supply differentials, still anybody's match. Tucson at a slight advantage because he's just mining off more bases right this second. Little bit of uh, minerals left there from Klauso. And Tucson still has a threat at the 9 o'clock. Although he might want to just back up and try to... Def well, never mind. He's going to press forward and try to clear out the siege tanks and maybe clear out as many SCVs as he can here. Comsat's dropping both directions. I don't think that ranges. Yeah. With vision. So we got an army mid-map. We've got some vultures able to stop mining bottom right. That's still maybe in Tucson's favor. It looks like Klauso wanting to reinforce entirely bottom right. Gonna find some wraith to go ahead and clear. If he can get here and, and wipe out bottom right... That's potentially a victory condition. Only one siege tank there to defend. So now Tucson getting pried open. He's got a lot of siege tanks trailing to defend last second. Not sieging, wanting to clear it out on the ground. Is that going to be it for that siege tank force? Three versus three and a few more troops trickling in to go ahead and clear it out. And a re-siege. These two siege tanks presumably just going to walk in and clean that command center up. The SCV's transferring now bottom right. With that bottom right hand transfer, that should be sufficient to keep Tucson economically ahead. Klauso bleeding off a lot of troops as he's walking to the 9 o'clock. Oh, that was a huge hit. Some SCV's now grouping up to the last mining base. The bottom left is mostly denied. And Tucson now taking shots at the 12 o'clock spoke. So Tucson with a bank, Klauso with very little. He's got to be very, very miserly with his troops here. Floating his command center out to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock base and hope it doesn't get spotted. SEVs trying to attack that siege tank, dragging a mine into them, which is at least something. But this is it for Klaus. So has moved at least into the 12 o'clock to get that working. So he's going to have a few more minerals piling in. But Tucson's supply count is growing. It's got to be frustrating to have these mines in place to see your opponent mining away like that. However, Tucson in pressing those troops forward. Never mind. Engagement bottom right, and Tucson has a big troop bundle to punch through. Sieging and unsieging, finding some siege tanks there, regrouping up just out of range. But that was from the 12 o'clock base. Klaus was just hoping that 12 o'clock expansion doesn't get spotted. Both players are starting to run towards the bottom left. Because if either player can secure bases bottom left... They will take the match. Right now, Tucson looking like he has the better shot at it. Sizable supply lead. If he can just get a vulture or two at the 12 o'clock, I think that'll be game. 
And some SCVs transferring out. Oof. Might be able to get some vengeance kills. With the sacrifice, which is something, but losing a lot of their numbers simultaneously. Oof. And some additional siege tanks eating some damage. Looks like bottom left, though, might be... So we got enough of a, a defensive shell here where Klausel might be able to grab bottom left. But as I say that, we got some dropships out for Tucson. 12 o'clock base is sent scattering. Command center not lifting off. And we do have, we have an SCV here down bottom left to replace this base now mining. Things scooping right back up. And Klauso looking for some place to attack. I think Tucson just has more and unfortunately walking headlong into a siege tank line on dragging mines back into a siege tank as he goes. So Tucson with the lead. Bottom left, we got some SCVs here, but they still haven't dropped the command center. And even if they did, the dropships might be able to just sweep across and clear that out. Three o'clock is nearly mined out, but we got two full mining bases here that are healthy for Tucson. The 12 o'clock base denied and the nine o'clock just about out. A command center actually floating, it looks like to make its way bottom left. SCVs looking to attack and start mining maybe at the 12 o'clock location. Klauso down to his last bits, but there's an SCV to support. I, I think that might've been a misclick on Klauso's part. He's now down to 24 SCVs and the dropships going across the map. The mine's still spotting, denying the SCVs here bottom left. They might be able to cycle up to the nine o'clock, but there's not much left to hit. They're gonna see a floating command center that they can easily deny. Gonna unload on the nine o'clock, clear all that out. That's the Goliath mine's going absolutely berserk there. And it looks like Tucson is gonna be able to hold this and take game two. Honestly, a nail biter at multiple points. So nine o'clock gone. Commands that are trying to float bottom left. 12 o'clock, uh, that's going to be dead as soon as something that shoots air makes its way that direction. Just a Goliath will do it. And that's all she wrote. Tucson has a massive bank. Klaus is still holding on, though. Another drop making its way up. This time going for the factory lines. And apparently I've lost connection to Battle.net. <laughs> but I'm still recording, I presume. That's weird. I think I might have lost internet connection altogether. But I'm still going to commentate this because we still got the YouTube folks out there. Kind of bad timing because I think this is all but complete. There's GG. Tucson takes the victory. He's up 2-0. Weird internet hiccup there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.